Okay. Hi, it's Groundhog Peggy, and somebody suggested to me that I um, try to record what I do when I get on my PreSonus, my Studio One software on my little PreSonus uh, recording audio box thing, and um, show how I do it. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to, um, first I got it opened up, I'm going to hit create a new song, and I'm going to name it, I'm going to name it Waterbound. I'm just going to put W bound so I don't have to type all day. So I get this screen right here and I'm going to hit that plus and first of all I will make a scratch track because if I don't make scratch track, unlike in real life when you're recording tracks what happens is you, you're not together. So to get together I have to play a scratch track with metronome, which is highly annoying, but I have to suffer through it. And that way then I scratch that scratch track. I delete it uh, later, but it gives me something to play along with so I don't sound too terrible. So I'm going to do uh, an easy song here. I'm going to do Waterbound. I'm just going to do a little bit of it. Um, I'm, I'm going to, right now I'm lazy. I've got this keyboard, so I got sounds close enough to an A. I'm going to do it in A. Um, so first, the hardest part for me is to find uh, a good time. Right now my metronome is set on 120. And I just try it. Might be a little slow. I'd rather go slow than fast, but I'll, I'll try it on 130. See how it goes. Do, 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 do. That's better uh, for just for demonstration purposes. So I got my metronome set. I'm, I'm actually going to turn that up a little bit to make sure I can hear it good. I have a lot of trouble playing with the metronome. I feel like a robot when I try to do it. So this will be just my scratch track. So I'm just going to scratch out the like that with the metronome so and I'm going to talk on let me turn up my mic here here so I can can I hear myself uh let me see can you hear me can you hear me okay yeah let me go up a little bit on that can you hear me can I hear me okay there we go all right okay so I'm gonna um just start and count it down because I will erase this track so I let it go a couple of beats here and start counting one, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Go, two, three, four. It just looks like it's not recording. Wait a minute. Are you recording? Okay, hang on. Sometimes mine doesn't record. Okay, it is. Let me turn it up just a little then. Uh, sometimes my PreSonus doesn't record and I have to turn it all off and start all over. So let me try again. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, two, go, two. Do, da, 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 do, da, da. I just hum along with it. And then the fiddle goes. And then the fiddle goes. Then you 
got that fiddle part. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 there's my scratch track, so I can turn that horrible metronome off and take record off of that. Now I will put on uh, guitar one. Hopefully that'll be the only one I need. Sometimes I need more. And oh, see the little blue light that comes on when I hit that record? It causes latency. Uh, the people listening to this should hear it. It's an echo. It's very annoying. You can't get your tracks lined up, but if you click that off, then it goes away. So I'm going to click that off of there. I learned that. That's a new thing I learned. Okay, so I'm going to follow along with my scratch track. I'll hit mix and I'll make sure that it's up loud enough so I can hear it enough to follow along because I won't have a metronome. Okay, and then I got it ready to record. So I'll go down here. If you just hit this, it plays. But if you hit this you get your red light there and that's record so i will listen to my scratch track usually i give myself a uh, little coaching things you know while i go along i didn't do it that much then but anyway i'll listen to my scratch track i might what i might do is take off my thumb pick and just use a like a flat pick on this to have a little rhythmic thing so here we go And I always try to be real quiet so that, oh, I guess I don't need a mic for that, so that uh, they can hear, they don't hear anything once it's over the few couple of seconds uh, at the end of it. So I got my guitar track on there. So uh, now I will, I'll put a voice track on there. Um, so I'll call it vocal one. I'll put just V1. So I'm not typing all day long here. Put my red light on and take that latency off, okay? Because that's not our friend. The latency is not our friend. Makes an enemy out of you and me. 
that's what latency does. Is everything going okay? Okay, I got a recording engineer here that's helping me do this. Ronan is actually recording this thing for me. So, uh, okay, I don't need anything. I'm just going to sing it. So I'm going to make sure I can hear these these two, especially the one that is my my uh, primary guitar that I want. And I'm going to sing this, I guess. I'm having trouble hearing things through here for some reason, maybe because it's recording uh, on the screen. But anyway, here we go. Let's try and see what happens. <clears throat> I have me a little cup of coffee, so my voice is, you know, my voice is caffeinated. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Water bound and I can't get home. Water bound and I can't get home. Water bound and I can't get home down in North Carolina. Stay with us, don't go home. Stay with us, don't go home. Stay with us, don't go home down in North Carolina. Now, for this video here, I'm not going to, you know, I'm just singing that one verse. <clears throat> now, I think I might put a harmony on there, so I'll put V2 for my harmonizing track. Put the red light on, take off the latency, and let's see what happens. Water bound and I can't get home. Water bound and I can't get home. Water bound and I can't get home down in North Carolina. Stay with us, don't go home. Stay with us, don't go home. Stay with us, don't go home down in North Carolina. Okay, I kind of got off on my words on some parts of that, and normally I would go back through and listen closer to how I got my words in there and, and then try to match it up on my harmony. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just telling that's what I do. I might put a vocal three. Um, can I do it? This is awful low. I don't know if I can. Mm -hmm. I'm, I might not be able to do that. Water bound and I can't get home. Water bound and I can't get home. Water bound and I can't get home down in North Carolina. Yeah, the us don't go home. Stay with us, don't go home. Stay with us, don't go home down in North Carolina. All right, that's a little low for me, but let's now I would listen and see see how those are balanced. And I'm going to turn off my scratch. I'm going to mute my scratch track. Okay, vocal one needs to be louder. In a real recording situation, what I probably would end up doing is take off, um, wait a minute, let's see. Right there, I would probably take my little razor and cut vocals two and three off right there just delete them and that way i'm just joining on the course are we doing okay for time okay so uh um, your time is up in that corner 
oh, oh, 15. Okay. Gee, I don't, I'm learning a lot of stuff. So then I would try this with just the one voice and then on, on the chorus, I'd put the other voices. Okay, now I'm finding a little bit of trouble with hearing all the parts, so I might turn these back up. This is my little trick I made up. I know there's bells and whistles on PreSonus that do these things, but I don't, I've never had the patience to learn. So I'm going to take my vocal one track and right click on it, and here it says duplic duplicate track with events. I'll click that, and then I got two vocal ones. So I got two vocal ones down here in my mix. I'll, I'll turn it down because it'll be over loud now and then I'll turn that one way down and it makes the vocal one stand out a little better so that I can put the other vocals up. That's how I do it anyway. Like I said, I know there's bells and whistles. I've just learned this some other way that this works for me. Let's see. Might turn it up a little bit. Turn those up a little. Now I can hear the melody line more prominently than the harmonies, but I can still hear the harmonies. So I'm going to leave it something like that, I think. Now I should get the fiddle, and I'll just put fid, so I'm not typing all day long, and take the latency off of that one. Uh, hey, Ronan, or somebody. Oh, are you guys busy? Uh, no. Oh, uh, my, can I have my fiddle somebody? somebody? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. My uh, engineer here, my recording engineer got busy with something else. Okay, so now I will try the fiddle on that. Take the mute off. Let me see how, if I'm kind of tuned. Really? Whoa. What? The instruments don't stay tuned in this room. Okay, let me make sure it's in tune with my other instruments. I will as I record. So I'm going to record right now. And I might put my scratch track back on. I don't remember how I started. Back up off that mic. Not in tune.
sorted out out of this video. I think oh, uh, oh well. It's okay. You're back. You're, I didn't get you back. <clears throat> All right. I backed up for the fiddle. I got out of the video by accident there. Oh yeah, I've had to move the fiddle. Okay. Now, um, several things. Uh, here I was tuning it at the beginning, so you can hear this. Okay, so you can hear I'm tr I'm tuning with myself. Um, okay, now I don't want that on there. This looks like this is where I got it together, so I'll cut off that first part. And then what I learned is I hit this arrow and I gradually, now what I would probably do is go back and do it again uh, because I was tuned in. But if, if something else goes wrong or you just don't like it or something, this is what I'm saying what I do. Uh, cut it off and then I gradually make it come in like that. So let's hear how that sounds if it comes in. Now the fiddle volume is too low. Uh, now what I would do is do the same thing I did to the voice. I'm going to duplicate track with events. And then um, I'll, I'll cut off this part with the singing. Okay, let's see what right here. I don't want it loud when there's singing with it. Okay, so it starts there, and so right about somewhere like maybe um, when the voices are s starting to stop, I'll take my little razor blade and cut it like that, and then this fiddle two, I'll just cut out of there because I got fiddle one because I don't want it real loud while I'm singing, so I'll just have one track, and then I'll go ahead and gradually make it louder so it sounds like one fiddle just getting louder but I don't have to go through and do it that way so let's hear that here we go And then the fiddle's gonna come in. And I just got one track, because it was a thin track. Now it's gonna increase to more fiddle. And I might even turn that fiddle too up. It's, see, it's gonna, uh, what do you call that? It's gonna be too loud. So I'll put both of them up. When you see that, that orange line come up there, it's gonna um, be distorted. So if I had to, I might make a third fiddle duplicate with events, but I'm not gonna do that for this purpose. You don't want the orange in there because then it's all distorted. It's They call it clipping. I got clipping sounds right there, so. So I would have to turn this down and add three fiddle tracks because you don't want those little orange things in there. Let's go to this here at the end. Okay, so then what I would do, I would probably add other instruments like try a banjo. Sometimes I I do the fiddle over like 12 times until I get what I like. Or I might add a guitar finger picking or some other guitar little things in there. And I might put a banjo part and then I might listen to it and think, you know what, I don't like the banjo in it. 
or I only want the banjo in the end of it. I might put a bass part in. I do that kind of stuff, but I, it's the same stuff as the same basic stuff as what I've done here. So when I've done all that, I, I put my start flag. This is how I do it. I know there's probably some official way to do it, but I, I see that that's where I started. So I put the start flag like real close to that. And then I go out here, out here looking for my end flag. Now I know this is not the right way to do it because it's awkward. There it is. This is very awkward. There's got to be some little button you click, but you know what? This is, I just do it like this. I'm not into buttons. I'm not into watching 500 YouTubes and learning which buttons I'm supposed to push. I, I'm not into that. So this is my way that I learned just by trial and error over the past, um, I don't know how long I've been doing this, seven years, something like that, maybe. So I'll just sit here and watch it all go by and try not to go, try not to get dizzy. And when I see, okay, now, usually I give myself a, a little thing like that. And then I know, you know, I hit the guitar like that's the end. So I might take it out a couple seconds after that. And that'll be my end. So uh, my beginning will be right there. It'll start right there. And then the end will be whoops. The end will be like this. And then the recording stops right there. And this thing, you know, I I may one of the hardest things to me is setting the metronome. And I misjudged uh this was really slower than I and I would want to do it but that's okay anyway that's the hardest part to me is to to hear that metronome going you know and try to try to guess you know so sometimes I have to do that I start a scratch track start playing with it I realize it's it's too slow or you know I, I didn't judge right and I have to start all over again with that so that's one of the things I do anyway at that point what I do is um uh, I hit song and I export the mix down and then I pick the place on the computer and I, I give it a name, not, not mixed down, but I'd call it waterbound. And it says it's checked here between selected markers, start and end. That's what it's going to export. Hit OK. And then what it does is it goes uh, into my, I send it to the WAV file. It's a WAV file now. And then I get on there and uh, through iTunes, I change it to an MP3 and then I put it on YouTube or do whatever I'm going to do with it. I do that. Anyway, I hope that... It does sound weird, but you can get iTunes on a Windows device. I do have iTunes. I've it, got iTunes, iTunes on here. will go on Windows. Yeah. So, I mean, I could do that right now to show, but I mean, it's kind of just, you know, I export mix you down. You whatever you want to convert it to. I... Wherever where I put it. iTunes is generally... Where is that? I don't even see where my. I think it's from a reliable source. So that's like the best thing about it. You don't know where most of those things. Are. Oh, here's my wave file. Yeah. Okay. So I do that, and then I hit OK. It's gonna. Clipping has occurred. Okay, that's because those orange lines, and then it says, "Do you want to abort the export?" Well, no. I still want it anyway. So here it is. I open it with the. Uh, open with where's okay with iTunes okay where is it no oh, there it is oh did I forget to name it I named it mixed uh, well okay I forgot to name it after I said to name oh well I'll write for right now I'll just say then I then what I do is I create an mp3 version and I see that okay it was two minutes and three seconds. So then what I do is I copy that and I put it into my um, MP3 files. That's where I've, I got that, okay? Then what I do is um, I get onto the, uh, I, I'll just, you know, I'll save that and close close it. And then what I do is I get onto my, um, 
this movie maker, and I put in a, um, I guess this is a 